Are you out to burn body fat? Well, here are my five non-negotiables when going full speed ahead. Welcome back to the Hero Sports Podcast, where we help millennial geeks, gamers, and cosplayers live their best, most heroic life and change their world. I am Troy Bushido, trainer and head fitness coach here at Hero Sports Coaching, and uh, I've been a personal trainer for over 15 years. Now, I'm just saying this to impress you. I'm just saying I fucked up many times when it comes to my own fitness and the journey of my clients. I've seen trends come, I've seen trends go, I've seen diets come, I've seen diets go. I've been part of uh, training studios that dictated me do their diet and their program and they've fucked up people left, right, and center. So I've seen my share of bullshit. So full disclosure, I'm in a fat loss phase right now. So feel free to follow me on Instagram to see my progress as it's going along and I'll be sure to do a uh, follow-up vlog of the entire thing when it's all said and done. But I want to get two things right away. I want to get right in the skin of it, get right thick of it, into the thick of it, bump into the thick of it, my five non-negotiables when it comes to fat loss. If you are on a fat loss plan, you're not just out to lose weight to actually lose body fat. This is what we're going to be going for. These are the fundamentals that will take you there. And every successful diet, nutrition, and workout plan has implemented these non-negotiables in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's been personalized. Maybe it's been stylized. Uh, an old mentor of mine said, hey, the trick to repackaging is making old school feel new school all over again. He said something to that effect. But let's do that. Let's go ahead and just distill it down. And as Bruce Lee would say, simply to simplify, down to the very essence. Five fat loss non-negotiables. Here we go. The first non-negotiable is what I call the slight caloric deficit. A caloric deficit or a calorie deficit is simply an energy mismatch where you're burning more energy than you're taking in on any given basis. Now, people think a calorie is more than a calorie or a calorie is just a calorie. There's a huge argument about what a calorie is. Let me just clarify it completely. A calorie is simply a unit of measurement, like an inch, like a centimeter, like a liter, like a cubic foot. All it is, and I'm just going to pop on Google right now, is about 4,000 joules of energy. That's it. This is to clarify what a calorie is. A calorie is simply 4.2 joules of energy. It's biology meets physics. It's just an energy source. And so when you take in energy via food, what you're doing is you're charging a battery. Now, unlike a real life battery that could break if you charge it too much or just stops taking in energy when you charge it too much, what happens is your body creates more energy stores in the form of body fat. So that's what happens when you're in a calorie surplus. So if you put yourself in a slight calorie deficit, that means you're running these batteries longer than you can recharge them back again. So you're burning a bit more calories than you take in. Now, the reason why I say slight is because you're not just burning calories for the sake of burning calories. You're trying to optimize yourself for your best heroic life, which means the calories have to be used for something. You could technically use calories for anything. You could burn calories however you want. So you could just jump up and down on a bed for hours on end. You can do Tybo or actually box. You can hike. You can walk. You can <laughs> run for three years, Jenny. You could do anything to burn calories. You can do HIIT training, aerobic training. You could be a CrossFitter, bro. But the reason why I say slight calorie deficit is because you want to do activities that create a better body, not just for the sake of burning calories. What if you did a dance class or a pole fitness class or a belly dancing class, or you learn how to LARP, which I'm still wanting to learn how to LARP. Chicago land, LARPing, foam fighting, hit me up. I got the itch to fight. I don't want to go back into a boxing ring. I don't have many brain cells left. I want to keep them. Give me some foam swords and let me go to town. But it, anyway, you're trying to improve your body in some way, shape, or form. If you want to improve yourself aesthetically, that means you have to go to a strength training regime, whether it's body weight or weighted. But in order to do those things well, you need to be fueled by some form of calories to do it. 
On the other hand, you can't be uh, fueled by too many calories or else you won't lose your body fat. So that's why I say slight calorie deficit. The calorie deficit is too drastic, meaning you just move, 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 and don't eat a thing. Your body will start to respond negatively. It will lower your mood. It will ramp up your stress hormones. It will slow your metabolism. It will do all sorts of things to make you stop because it doesn't want to starve to death. So when it's in a slight deficit, you're still moving. You're still fueling those activities. But at the same time, that slight deficit is being made up for through your body fat stores. So if you're into counting macros and counting calories and you got the apps, shameless plug, the Hero Forge coaching app actually has a nutrition tracker there, uh, which is included free with nutrition coaching. Uh, shameless plug. Yeah, if you're a macro tracker, if you're a calorie tracker, use whatever log you can to log your food and see how many calories you're taking in. Now, how do you know if you're in a calorie deficit or not? There's a few ways to do this. First off, if you want to use any calculator, they're probably going to estimate what your calorie intake should be uh, to put you in a slight deficit. It's usually 250 calories to 500 calories, less than what your daily calorie burn is. So for example, if you take in 2000 calories a day to maintain your weight, then the nutrition tracker will probably tell you to burn anywhere, uh, I'm sorry, to take in between 1850 to as low as 1700 calories per day to create that calorie deficit. If you're not sure, or if you do it the old fashioned way, the best way to do that is to check what your weight is right now. And has it been stable for the past week or so? If it has been stable for the past week or so, go ahead and log the calories on your day. What it's telling me is that you have figured out what your maintenance calories is. So you figure out those maintenance calories for yourself and then go ahead and subtract anywhere between 250 to 500 from that number. Now you have a slight calorie deficit. Now, if you don't want to count macros, you want to do it a more holistic way, then I advocate you to eat 85% of the time in what I call a minimal processed food style. What does that mean? It means make sure you eat foods that look like they've been picked, plucked, or killed. Picked, meaning picked from a tree, it's plucked from the ground, killed, you know what I mean. So you're taking in these types of foods that uh, have been from nature. And, and why do that? Well, two reasons. One, you're just going to feel better because they're going to be rich in vitamins and minerals. And you're gonna be fuller for less calories. You see, the more processed the food becomes, the more calorically dense it becomes, and you get lower calories per ounce. So, big example. Let's Google how many calories a banana has. I would usually say what it is, but I just forgot off the top of my head. So, banana, minions. Calories in one whole banana, 110 calories. Now, that's a chunky food, just imagine it. I may just kind of put a picture on screen if I am creative enough in the editing room. And that's 110 calories for, what, how many ounces of food? 4.2 ounces. Let's go weight in ounces, Sour Patch Kits. So two ounces of one small 24 piece Sour Patch Kids. Calories in four ounces Sour Patch Kids. About 350. Triple the calories for only 32 pieces of Sour Patch Kids. That's the trick. That's the secret, my friends. The more processed the food is, the less food you get, but the more calories it dishes out. So when we say minimally processed food, you're taking in a lot of food to keep you satisfied and full without taking in all those calories. So usually when I have people start with an eating plan, they're surprised about how many calories they gotta take in. But then I tell them, you know what? You're using minimally processed food. It's gonna be a hearty amount of food. And even if you don't eat all of it, you're still gonna be in a calorie deficit because it's like, you're full, longer, harder, better. Wow, that sounded dirty when I said it out loud. No, I'm not gonna cut it. Let's keep it. But that's why I always advocate minimally processed foods if you don't wanna count calories because what's gonna happen is you're just gonna be eating more wholesome, filling, vitamin-fueled, whole, wholesome, vitamin-fueled foods in the long run. Now, when I say 85%, what it means to me is that it gives you one whole day to break that diet or three meals to break that diet. Hey guys, Troy here from the editing room. I'm excited to present today's sponsor, Heroes Forge Coaching. Hey, it's my company, what do you know? If you're a geek who wants to get in shape or just feel more confident in the skin you're in, Heroes Forge Coaching is the perfect coaching app for you. 
Hero Sports Coaching provides total body and mind coaching to take you to the next level. Each workout is designed to keep you burning fat, increasing your energy, and sculpting your muscles. Plus, you'll have access to an online community group chat as well as a team of coaches who are there to support you every step of the way. So if you're ready to take your fitness to the next level, I encourage you to check out Heroes Forge Coaching. Click the link in the description below and get started today. The discount code is already built in, so you can get 10% off your membership forever. Bonus points if you know that movie reference. But anyway, come join our community of heroes and become the strongest, most confident, and most empowered version of yourself. And now, back to the episode. Now, if you want to be 90% adherence to that sort of eating plan, that's going to leave you one, let's call it a cheat meal. I don't like calling it a cheat meal. I usually, when I talk to my clients in nutrition, I call it spike meals. You're deliberately spiking your calories and deliberately spiking your carbs specifically so that way your body doesn't get stagnant in that calorie deficit. And also you get a chance to eat your treats. And it's not cheating if it's part of the plan. Right? right? My next non-negotiable, I gotta say that again. <laughs> Negotiable. My next non-negotiable is protein. It, I know it's such a dude bro cliche to say, but when it comes to fat loss, protein is gonna be huge. It's gonna be incredibly important. If you could have a third of your meal plate be protein in each of your three meals, you're gonna be in awesome shape in the long run. Protein does two things. One, it's very satiating, meaning you can have a decent amount of it and really feel full. And you're not gonna get a ton of calories from it. You're only getting four calories per gram of protein. So if you have, for instance, let's go with, uh, I had a steak of ahi tuna for lunch today. My ahi tuna steak was probably six ounces of meat, 25 grams of protein. So that's about 100 calories and an ahi tuna steak. And if you don't know what ahi tuna is, is the same type of tuna steak they dice up and put into sushi. So I'm allergic to shellfish, so I can only have certain types of fish in my protein diet. And so I love ahi tuna. When you sear it, you get that sushi quality tuna. It's so dang good. But yeah, 100 calories for that steak of tuna. It's glorious. The trick is you're also getting nutrients used to build muscle tissue. Now. I'll talk more about strength training and muscle tissue later on in this podcast. Whether your goal is muscle toning or muscle building, to me they're the same. It's just a matter of uh, eating habits. But either way, you're packing on muscle tissue to bump up your metabolism. Imagine this. Imagine you're a car and you're not a Tesla. Fuck Teslas. Imagine you're a raw gasoline car. Let's call your, let's say you're a Dodge Challenger, right? You're a V6 Dodge Challenger. I don't know if they make them in V6, but let's just say you're a V6, right? And you get not a lot of miles per, to the gallon. You may get, what, 15 to 18 miles to the gallon? Now, if you're trying to learn, lose body fat, that's essentially meaning you're trying to lose more gasoline in your gas tank, in your stored energy. So what would you do to a Dodge Challenger to make it burn more gas? You crank up the horsepower. Swap it out for a V8. Replace the intake, replace the headers, slap a supercharger on it. It's been a while since I've been a car nut. I haven't been a car nut since the early Fast and Furious days. But just long story short, if you add more horsepower to your car, it burns more gas per gallon. It takes more energy to be that badass, as is your human body. If you try to make your body stronger, what is a byproduct? you're going to be burning more stored energy, in this case, body fat. Now, in order to build up your horsepower, you have to put on more lean muscle tissue. Toned or built, we'll get to that, but it requires protein either way. So not only are you gonna be feeding your body with something that's very satisfying for very little calories, but you're gonna be fueling your process. So if you're a macro counter, if you're doing calorie counting once again, if counting is your thing, you're gonna be multiplying your goal weight by 0.85. So let's say my goal weight, uh, I'm trying to burn 10 pounds right now. So my goal weight is gonna be buck 60. I'm a buck 70 right now. So that means I will be needing 136 grams of protein per day. It's not a horribly hard amount, but that's how we do it. Uh, if you are a non-macro counter, if you're more intuitive, if you're more of the artsy type, I know a lot of friends in the community are more artsy than math. You're going to be thinking one to two palms of protein. A rule of thumb, you're going to be taking in about a third of your meal plates 
or one to two palms. And think palms, not palms with fingers. Next, sleep. The hardest thing of my non-negotiables is sleep. Oh God, it sucks trying to get sleep. But the closer you are to that lucky seven when it comes to the hours of sleep per night, if you could crank out seven hours per sleep a night, you're golden. If you could crank out eight hours of sleep per night, you are an A plus 4.0 GPA valedictorian. And I say that because realistically, it's tough. Most people get six on a good night. Most people get five and a half ish on a decent night. Most people get four. You got sleep apnea, you got insomnia, you got stresses, you have so many things. Quite frankly, you have so many factors that are above my pay grade, but if you could do anything at all to improve your sleep, do it. I don't have as much advice for it. Uh, I use a sleep tracker on my Fitbit to track my quality of sleep. I have nighttime rituals, rituals, rituals. I have nighttime rituals and habits that help me get a better quality of sleep. Like I said, I'm not a huge expert. I've had clients that actually had to go on sleep paps and CPAP machines for sleep apnea to ramp up their sleep quality. So that is all customized to you. I wish you the best of luck. My next non-negotiable is courtesy of my good friend, Eric Jaws. When I moved, I lost my water bottle. He bought me a new one for my birthday. Shout out to you, Eric motherfucking Jaws. Ironically, you got me a, a water bottle, the color of water. And yes, his nickname is Eric Jaws. So he, t he hates shark jokes, by the way. Ever since he's been part of the cosplay community, the shark has been his shtick. But man, we ran that gimmick down to the ground. So I love you, Eric Jaws. If I give you more shark jokes, I apologize in advance, but thank you for this water bottle. What's my point? Hydrate! That is my non-negotiable right there. In fact, I drink to that right now. How many ounces of water per day should you really have? Well, the beginner bunny slope is gonna be about 60 ounces, 60 to 64 ounces per day. Once you get that down, progress up to the A plus double S tier level, which I'm not at yet, but it is half your body weight in fluid ounces. That is S tier hydration right there. So we got some wiggle room. Start with 60. Couple tips with those non-negotiables. Couple practical tips I like to give. First off, if you drink everything else but water, just be mindful of what has caffeine in it and what doesn't. You see, caffeine is a diuretic, meaning it dehydrates you just as much as it rehydrates you. So the biggest mistake people make is they think, hey, my coffee, my tea counts as water, right? Because you need water to make it? Yes and no. Some dietitians have a more complicated way of measuring it, but my rule of thumb is to count coffee or tea, caffeinated drinks as half the hydration value. So I'm gonna take this, let's say, let's pretend this A&W Zero sugar root beer that I just happened to have near my desk is actually, it is Coke. I would count this 20 fluid ounces as 10 fluid ounces because Coke's caffeine that would mess with my hydration. And quite frankly, that's why you get a lot of caffeine crashes is because a lot of times when your body is dehydrated, it fatigues faster, it gets very tired very faster. Couple that with the caffeine crash and it leaves you needing more caffeine. So the best thing you can do is to do two things. One, as your coffee or tea is brewing in the morning, have some room temperature water at the ready next to your coffee machine, about eight to 10 ounces. Drink that, just doubt it as the coffee is brewing. And so you'll already have some hydration in your system. You see, you actually dehydrate in your sleep as well. And you wake up dehydrated most of the time. So if you have some water while your caffeine brews, you're gonna be in a very good position to have sustained hydration and energy throughout the day. Now, second strategy, once you're done with your coffee, go ahead and drink water to level out the crash. What's gonna happen is you have your spike of energy. Now, what a typical caffeine crash does is drops your energy right back down. But if you stay hydrated, it goes up and taper your energy drop instead. And you're getting more hydrated. So, once again, to review, when you wake up, have water as your caffeine brews. After your first hit of caffeine, have some water to level it off. Boom. Hydrated, baby. Like, I'm sorry, balance your caffeine with your hydration. So train your body not to have the caffeine crash uh, is to offset the caffeine with, with a hydrated drink and keep the body moving. So that's the way to do it. Uh, if you just have caffeine and then no hydration afterwards, boop, hits you. 
And will you, you will your caffeine crash? Yeah, probably, but it won't be as bad if you're well hydrated. Also, sleep patterns do alter the speed of your crash. If you wake up tired, maybe only get three hours of quality sleep, and you're dehydrated, and you take a caffeine, your caffeine crash will brick you like a bad Xbox. It just poof, hits you. So, the hydration, quality sleep, and keeping moving. My next non-negotiable with fat loss, movement. Just move. I don't care how you move. I don't care what you do. You have two forms of movement, exercise-based movement and what they call NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, just normal day-to-day -day activity. Look, no matter if you're exercising or just living life, the minimal dose for fat loss to me is 7K steps of walking each day. It's another reason why I go Fitbit. I don't need fancy technology. I just need to know how many steps I'm cracking. So there it is. I am at 7,200. I hit my minimal today. Optimal dose is going to be 10K steps a day or it's equivalent. And what I mean by equivalent is it doesn't need to be walking. Can it be walking? Sure. It's actually one of the most relaxing things you could do for fat loss. It's the easiest thing you could do. It's the simplest thing you could do. It's the most exercise recovery and I'll explain more of that in a minute. It's the most exercise recovery friendly thing to do when it comes to movement. It, it's just glorious. But you could also do any other forms of movement. You could dance, you could box, you could fight, you could play connect, you could play on a meta, I was about to say Oculus, play on your meta quest. Any sort of movement will do, but 7K is a passing grade. And then from there, just do it like uh, school. 80%, 90%, 100%, in this case, 10K. So. Do it any way you want to. Now, here's a side story. This has been very challenging for me to do, getting this uh, seven, 10K steps a day because my training job now is very remote. I work for a training studio out of the San Francisco Bay Area, but I live in Chicago. The entire job is remote. I do remote fitness coaching, both virtually and on Zoom for clients and helping with their nutrition. This means I'm seated a lot more than I used to be. When I used to train people locally, I would crack 10K steps a day, easy work, because I'm teaching classes. I remember, a uh, shout out to Chulo Fit. I did, I worked for them back in 2018 to 2019. I was teaching these kickboxing classes. I was working with high school and entering college athletes. I was moving all over the place. And then the pandemic hit. And then I quit there. And I didn't realize how many steps I missed. <laughs> but there you go, get your 10K in. When I wrote this script, I realized something. I was like, oh wait, I said my five non-negotiables, but I really had six. And I hinted at this when I talked about protein. My sixth non-negotiable, my bonus non-negotiable, my colossal non-negotiable is resistance training. Whether you use weights, your body weight, or my favorite, a hybrid of both. You need resistance put upon your muscles for them to get stronger. That way they can increase certainly muscle tissue, and if you're in a calorie deficit, your muscles create density, therefore create firmness, therefore create tone, or if you're in a calorie surplus and you're bodybuilding, you create muscle mass, you create that side, that muscle mass. And if you want to recompose and do both, it's still a slight calorie deficit. You still will need to be burning more fat than you put on muscle. But like I said before, imagine you're that car that needs more horsepower because it needs to burn more fuel. Ramp up your horsepower get stronger. Now, if you need a specific training program on how to do that, we are taking in new clients at Heroes Forge Coaching. For as low as 35 bucks a month, you will have a group and community in your pocket and you'll be able to take my workouts with you to the gym or working out from home using your smartphone. My entire coaching system is app-based. I basically feed the coaching into the system you talk to me over a DM as well as a group chat, and then you get your workouts sent right to you. Take it to a gym. All my workouts are tailored for everything as basic as a Planet Fitness all the way up to the most advanced gyms. And if you need at-home workouts, I can tailor that too. Like I said, programs start as low as $35 a month because, hey, it's digital. It's easy for me to do, and therefore it's easy for you to get. Take advantage of how technology has made coaching and training far less expensive. Look, I used to charge 80 to $90 an hour when I worked downtown in the gyms, when I worked in downtown Chicago. You could get my programming for 35 bucks a month and have me 
answer your questions on demand at any time. And I got your back either way. So, like I said, this is self-sponsored. If you do need a strength training program, we got a few premium programs on the back burner right now. In fact, we're beta testing uh, the Super Soldier program, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier style program. Uh, we're going to be having the Spider-Verse program out for those of you who are looking to put on lean muscle tissue as well as improve your mobility and flexibility for like parkour or athletic sports. We're going to be doing a level 20 Lord of the Rings style workout for you LARPers. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on the back burner, but if you want to be part of any of the beta testing of those programs, or if you need a customized program for you, or you just want to join a community, go into doobly-doo. I will have the links for all that down below. But yeah, those are my 5.5 non-negotiables when it comes to fat loss. Every single fat loss plan had that as the basis. They just spun it differently. Les Mills did like a power pump program. Hey, that's resistance training. Meta Quest had, what's that program called? Beat Saber and Taibo combined. My friends are on it. Shout out to you, Amber. You're on it. Supernatural, that's what it is. Shout out to my friend Amber uh, uh, that does Supernatural. I have a couple of other friends that do that, but that, that's movement. Oh God, every diet plan, paleo, hey, I hate carnivore, but Mediterranean, vegan, they all go into a calorie deficit through minimally processed foods. See, every version of some sort of fat loss plan goes through those non-negotiables. Once again, we Bruce Lee it. We simplified it down to the essence. Look, if you have any questions at all, hit them up in the comments below. And if you had any sort of value or any sort of tips at all, and if you took any of these tips and they felt valuable to you, please go ahead and leave a like on this video. And if you want more podcasts like this, whether I do solo episodes or I have a future guest on, go ahead and subscribe to Heroes Forge Coaching here on YouTube. I love doing these podcasts. I'm going to keep making these. In the meantime, go out there and be the hero of your world. All right. Talk to you soon. Peace.